Hey guys, it's Nicolás Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for watching the videos. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to take the time to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really going to make a difference in growing this amazing community. And today I'm really, really excited about what I'm going to be teaching you. And basically I've been learning this over the last few days and that is how we can create a mesh from the code. So we normally create 3D shapes from, you know, authoring tools such as Maya 3D, Blender 3D and other ones, and now also Pro Builder. But I think one of the things that I think is important for us as game developers is to understand all the pieces and how those work and how those play out into our game. So I'm gonna start with something simple, as simple as creating a quad. And then once we learn how to create a quad in the next videos, we'll show you, we'll show you how to create a cube, and then we'll start extending this series as we learn through that process. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so I'm gonna start with something different. I normally start in Unity and show you as we code everything, but I want to sketch this out because it took me some time to, to understand it. And Unity has really good documentation about it, but I think it's good if I, if I sketch it. So we're gonna be creating a quad, and a quad is basically gonna be composed of four different points. So if we want to draw a quad, we need to draw a quad in this, in this fashion. And and I'm sorry about the the quality of my quad because I'm using my touchpad, so it's not gonna look perfect. But basically this is gonna be a quad, and the points that it's gonna have, we're gonna have one here at point zero. We're also gonna have one here at point one. These are gonna be called what we call vertex, so this is a vertex. And then all of them are called vertices, so if you're using singular, is vertex. If you're using plural, it's gonna be vertices, and you're probably really familiar with that if you use 3D tools in the past. So so if I do this, I'm gonna have a vertex created at point zero, one at point one, another one created at point two, and then one at point at point three. The the other thing that we need in order to create a to create a mesh, which is what we're gonna be creating, not only we're gonna to need to create vertices, we're also gonna to need to create what's called triangles. And the way that the triangles work is for example for this quad we're going to have to divide it in half and when we're creating these triangles in unity unity works in a basically you have to specify them in a clo clockwise mode so we'll create a triangle that goes from zero two and one then we'll create another triangle that goes from two three and one so then after that what we'll need to do is we'll need to tell unity what the normals are so in the normals are basically gonna be what tell Unity what direction we're gonna be rendering this. So and that's used for shading. So if you had a material and we have the material reacting to light, the direction of the normals is really important because that's basically how Unity is going to render, meaning that that's how we're gonna be able to see the materials that get applied to this 3D model that we're creating dynamically. So, and the last thing that we'll do is we'll create UVs. If we need to add textures to this later on, then we'll need to create UVs. And UVs are gonna work in a little bit different. So, meaning like we have to create four different UVs and they use vector tools. So, what I think I need to do now is jump into Unity and show you, and show you how we do that. So, I'm gonna break this down into two phases. We're gonna do it all in one video, but the first phase is gonna be generating this mesh programmatically and then the last phase is going to be basically bringing in some some of the code that I wrote for uh, Magic Leap Experience and generating dynamic materials so that every time we create a shape it basically creates a generates a random material which is basically going to be copying copying this code that I have right here and also this method and and I will put a link to the description uh, basically that has the information about where this repo is and how you can download it I'm also gonna put this repository that we're going through, it's gonna be in, in GitHub as well. So let's go ahead and jump into Unity and start looking at what we need to do. So right now I, I created a basically a, a scene that is called Unity 3D Procedural Generation. This is the project name and I'm gonna put that in GitHub just like I indicated. And right now I have a plain example, we can, we can call this a qua, I think that's a better name. So we can just say this is going to be the quad example. And in the quad example, we're going to have, basically we're going to have a game object that it's going to be the one generating 
generating the 3D model. So right now I have a procedural shape and we can call, we can just basically just call these procedural shapes. And right now all it has is gonna have a mesh filter. We're also gonna need to add, and we can add this programmatically, we can add it through here. I'm gonna add it through here, I think it's fine if we just add it here. But you can see that we don't have a mesh, and the mesh is the one that we're gonna be creating through code. And we're also gonna need to create a script, so I'm gonna go under scripts, and we're gonna create a new script. And I wanna make this generic because I want this to work with multiple shapes. We might start with a quad today, but then on the next video I might do a cube, and then we can do a cone, and then basically different shapes. So I'm hoping to have a lot of different videos that follow up this video. So let's just call this one procedural shapes, just like we did on the game object. Then we'll go into the game object and basically associate that script. So let's just wait until it compiles. Excellent, we can just drag it and drop it. And now we have the script associated. So the next thing that I'll do is let's go ahead and open it up. So I'm just gonna go either, you can double click it or I'll just go to assets, open C sharp project. Excellent, so we're basically starting with a, an empty an empty mono behavior and we're going to use we're going to we're going to use the star and also the also the update so one thing that i want to have on this specific example for the quad is i want to specify the width of the quad so i'm going to create a private variable this one is going to be a float and this one is going to be called width and i want to also expose it because i want people to be able to change this at runtime and I also want to create one called float, and this one is going to be the height. And we can just say that it's going to be, by default, it's going to be 10 units long on the width, and also on the height we can do the same thing. So this is going to be the, the default values. So, so to start, we're going to need to create a mesh. So we're going to, have, we're going to have to have a mesh instance. So I'm going to say mesh, and then this is going to be a mesh. This one is just gonna be private. I don't want people to be changing the mesh through the inspector, so we're just gonna make it private. And then we're just gonna create a new mesh on the start. Excellent. The The other thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna have to get a component which is call, called the mesh filter. We can just say get component and then mesh filter, and that's the one that I added on the, on the inspector. So this is the one, let me show you one more time. So this is gonna be this one right here. It needs to be associated with a mesh. So you can see that right now it has none. So we'll need to associate that here by just saying mesh equal, and then the mesh that we just created. So now if we go back into Unity and I were to run this, you'll see that we, we actually created a mesh. It just doesn't have any vertices or any information whatsoever. There we go. It's just a, basically a mesh that we can even see. And if you double click it, you can kind of see there's some information that we have about it, but it's basically just an empty mesh. All right, so let's go ahead and double click it, and I'm just gonna zoom in here. Awesome, so now what we're gonna do is actually create the vertices. So I'm gonna break it up into multiple steps, and I want this to be documented so that you are familiar with, with this. I'm also gonna put a link to a, a Unity tutorial that I, that I use, basically in the documentation, that is really, really helpful. It'll show you basically what I'm going through right now. And that's what I did to, to learn about this. So the first thing that we need to do, step one is gonna be create vertices. So that's the first thing that we need to do. And then step two, we're gonna do create triangles. And if we go into our diagram, if I go into Chrome, we need to tell, this is gonna be, because we're using a 3D engine and we're doing basically using everything in 3D, we're gonna have to create these four vertices. We need to specify the location of each vertices in X, Y, and Z, so that's why they need to be a, a vector three. And then we're also gonna be creating the triangles. So the triangles are also gonna be, they're also gonna be to be stored, so, but those ones are gonna be integers. All we need to tell Unity is that the triangles are either you know, at index zero, two, and one, or at index two, three, and one. So it'll already know what the vertices are. And then, so that's basically step two, creating the triangles. And then step three, it's gonna be creating the normals so that we have the right shading showing up. And the last one that we'll do, it's basically create the UVs. 
And all of these ones are going to have to be created and assigned. So let's just do create and assign. And there we go. Create and assign, create and assign. Excellent. So the first thing that we need to do is we got to create the vertices. And it needs to be an array because we're creating multiple of them. So we'll need to do a vector three array. This one is going to be called vertices. And we'll just call it with, for convention, lowercase. Then we'll say new vector three. And we need to create an array of four items because we're storing, basically going to be storing these four different points. Then the other thing that we need to do is we need to set each of them. So at index zero, we need to specify where that vertice is going to be. So we're going to say new vector three. And then this one is going to be located at zero, zero, zero. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to create a vertice at that location. And then I'm going to duplicate these four times because I know that we're going to need four vertices. The other one is going to be the vertice lo at location one. That one is going to be set. So we need to offset it by a width. So that's what we need to say the width here, which is going to be the width that I pass in by default is going to be, is going to be 10. Then for Y, we're going to be staying at zero. And then for Z, we're also going to be staying at zero because we're creating basically a 2D quad. So that's what that's going to be. Then the next one is going to be a two. That one we need to offset it. So we're still going to say stay at zero, but we need to offset it by the height. So we're going to stay here at zero. We're going to offset this by the height. And again, we're going to stay at zero because this is a quad. And then that last one is going to have to be the one that is at the very top. So we need to go up on the height and we need to go on the width to go all the way to the end. So we're going to have to say width and then height. Excellent. So now that's great. We have our vertices, but we need to also assign the, the triangles. So for that, we're going to need an array. And we can just call these variable triangles. And this array, it's going to be of six. And the reason why it's going to be of six is because we need to store six different locations. One is going to be zero, two, and one. The other one is going to be two, three, and one. So that's why that needs to be of six. Then we need to associate the, the right, basically the right locations of those triangles. So first one is going to be a zero. So the next one, it's going to be at two. And the last one on this triangle is going to be at one. So if we go back, we're going to have zero, we're going to have two, and then we're going to have the one. So that makes up the first triangle. And we can say first triangle. Now we need to do the same thing for the other triangle. So now we need to do this one is going to go three, four, and five. And remember that we're starting, we're doing it clockwise clockwise. So you need to make sure that you start from, you know, from this point and then move clockwise to the last point. So this one is going to be two. The other one is going to be three and then one, three and one. So this one is going to be the second triangle. So now normals are a little bit different and we need to tell the system the basically the where this is going to be facing. So if you don't 3D modeling, you're probably familiar with faces and you know that Sometimes if you get inside of a, let's say you have a sphere and you get inside of a sphere, you can't really see what the texture is. And that's because the normals are facing the outer part of the sphere. So that, you know, if you apply a material, you can see basically the material that is associated with that model. So that's what we need to do here. We need to tell the system where the normals are going to be pointing, pointing to. So we're going to say vector three, and this is going to be normals. And then we're also going to say vector three, and then we're going to create basically four different normals. So in for this one, we're going to have to say the direction that are going. So it's going to be normals at zero. And we're going to say vector three. And luckily, we have these quick, basically helpers that we can set. So we can say vector that three, four. And that's basically going to say, you know, a location x of zero, location y of zero, and z of one. That's where I want those normals to face to. And we're going to need to create a couple of more. So that's going to be for the first point. And remember, this is four, so we need to specify the four, four different normals. So one is going to be right here, 
and then for the other point right here, the other point right here, and the other point right here. So that's what we're saying, the direction of the four, four different vertices. So let's just do three here. And that should basically wrap up normals. And lastly, we're also going to need to do the UVs. So for the UVs, it's going to be a little bit different. The We need to specify basically how, if we want to go across with a texture. So if I go to the Google, basically we need to tell it, okay, at this point, this is when we want the texture to start. And the texture is going to go all the way across to basically to one. So we're going to use zero and one to determine what the UVs are going to be. So let's go back here and create a vector two. And this vector two is also going to be an array. And this one is going to be UVs. So for the UVs, we need to do a vector, basically a vector two, because it's using a 2D, a 2D plane. So now, and then we're also going to need to do four. Now for UV zero, we're going to have to say that this one is going to start, basically it's going to start at zero and zero. So we're going to say zero comma zero. And if I go back to our diagram, we're telling the system that the texture is going to start at zero, zero. Now for, for the next point, it's going to be a little bit different because we need to basically do, we need to start at one, which is going to be for the, for the width. And then the height is going to be zero. So this one is going to be one zero. And we need to say that this one is going to be index one. And we'll do two more. Then for the next one, we need to do this one. This one is going to be width of zero. And then y is going to be one. So we're just going to say zero here, one. And the last one is going to be a one, one, because we want to basically go up one and then to the right one. So that's going to be that part. So one thing that we, we haven't done yet, we haven't really told the system what the vertices are, what the triangles are, the normals and the UVs. So to do that, we need to do, we need to tell the mesh that the vertices are going to be vertices. So we just say mesh that vertices and then this one's going to be vertices. And then we'll say mesh that triangles equal triangles. Then we'll say mesh that normals equal normals. And lastly, we'll say mesh that UVs, UV equal UVs. Excellent. And the last thing that I that I read in the documentation of Unity is that they recommend that you call this optimize meta. Basically optimize, like it says, optimize the mesh data to improve, improve rendering and performance. So we'll call that right at the end. Excellent. So I think that's all we need in order for us to create a to create a quad. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity and see if that's work, working. So I'm just going to hit play and we can see if that quad is getting created. And let's see. OK, there we go. So it is getting created, but we don't have a material associated with it. So that's the next thing that I need to do. I'm going to create a material right now and associate it with it, but then we'll create materials dynamically. So I actually created a material already. It's called default. Let's go ahead and associate that. And let's hit play and see what happens. And there we go. So we have the we have a procedural generated mesh, which is which is really cool even though it's just a simple quad. But just imagine all the things that we can do now that we know how to create a mesh procedurally. So you can basically, yeah, change the colors if you wanted to and change this. So so this is working great. What I what I want to do now is one thing that it's cool, like let's say that I wanted to change the, the width and height to one and one. And I hit play. It's going to be much smaller because I'm basically modifying the width and the height. So that's great. But one thing that will be cool if we could change this width and height as the game is running. So that's what I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these these two methods on the on the start. So we're going to go to mesh and we're going to get the mesh filter. So the next thing I'm going to move to a new method. In that method, it's going to be basically the one that is generating the generating the qua. So I'm just going to say generate qua, and then just basically call it. And in fact, we can basically specify the parameters if we wanted to. 
through here. So we can say new width and float new height. And we can just go ahead and replace what where we say new, where we say width with width and then height with new height. I think that's the only place where we're using that in here. So uh, so, so now we all we need to do here is just call it from the call it from the update and we can just say width. And the reason why I'm parameterizing this is because I might change the way that this works later on. So I like to add new parameters in case we move this to a new class. And then this one's gonna be height. Awesome. So now that we do that, we can in fact just since this one is just a single line, we can just do a lambda here. There we go. Excellent. So now if we go back into Unity and we hit play, let's wait until it compiles. And we'll see that we'll be able to change the width and the height. So, so this is what's cool about it, is I can change it because it's in the update, the vertices are getting regenerated. Let me make this gizmo smaller so you can see the mesh. And we can change, basically set it back to red so we can see what we're working on. So yeah, so I can change the width, I can change the height, and you can see that everything is changing as I'm changing the as I'm changing the width and the height. So that's that part. So the next part that I wanted to work on was let's set this back to 10 and 10. So we can see up the big one. And let's go back into let's go back into the repository that I'm gonna be putting in the description. So what I want to do is I want to create the mesh, but I also want to create a, a material dynamically. And that's what I'm doing right here is I'm creating a material. I call it a random material. And then I'm basically setting the emission, setting a color, and then associating that render to that material. Let's go ahead and do that. And the reason why I'm doing all this is because I, like I said, I want to, I want to be extending this at some point. And, and this is gonna be needed for, if we're creating more shapes and more procedural levels, I'm gonna be reusing a lot of this. So this one is gonna be apply random material. And we'll just paste that code there and then we'll just refactor here in just a minute. We can just, there we go. Just, and then we're also gonna need the, the get random color. And we'll just put that at the end. There we go. Use this as a property so we can call it awesome. So this one is going to be, let's see, so the material we're basically going to get, because we're using the lightweight rendering pipeline, I am using the shader that find lightweight render pipeline, but if you're using a different pipeline, you this will change. So make sure that you're looking at what the shader name is, and then based on that shader name, you can replace this. We can we can basically put this as a constant just to make it, make it better, so more maintainable, so I can just say, or we can expose it as a string. So the person that is setting this up as a as a level designer might set this as a property. So we can say shader, we can say random shader type name. And we just assign it there. And we'll expose it as well. There we go. And then we'll just that way it's more maintainable. Then we'll just get go ahead and set it there so we don't hard code anything. And the name of the material, I'm not really picky about this, so we can just say name of, we can just grab the name of this game object. And then we're using a string interpolation here, that's why I'm able to, to do that. So we're just saying, okay, give me the name of that game object and then append underscore material. Then we grab that material, we enable emission, we set the, we set the emission color in, which is gonna be which is gonna be set based on the, the color of the material. And and then we set the material, the material color. And I think I'm calling oh yeah, that's what I that's what I was thinking. So we get the random color generated here and then we assign it to the emission as well. So it basically looks brighter. Okay, so this works and and that works. And lastly, I think I'm just gonna do this right on the just want to do it on the start because I don't want this to be executing every time on every frame. So, and also keep in mind that this is probably not optimal to be changing this on every frame. This is just for demonstration purposes. 
So just be careful when you're basically generating a lot of mesh data. And, and to create a cube or to create a, a quad, you can use you know something like Maya 3D or, or even Pro Builder to do that. But I think, like I said in the beginning of this video, this is, is really helpful to understand the ins and outs of creating a 3D material a 3D object. All right, so now that we have that, we can go back into back into Unity, and we can see it looks like okay, we don't have an error, and I'm gonna just hit apply, hit play, and see what happens. And you can see that I don't have the default material associated right now. I have a game object and underscore material. I should have set it to that. But the cool thing is that it generated a different material. So if I go in and hit play one more time, the color shouldn't be green. It should be something else. And looks like that part is working. Let me look in here. And OK, I see what this is doing. Let's do something different. Instead of doing name off, let's do name, game object that name. And there we go. That should have the proper name, which is going to be procedural shapes. And if I hit play, we should see we should see that working now. There we go. So now what happens if I let's say that I want to clone this multiple times? Clone it, clone it, and probably clone it. I haven't tested this, so let's see if it works. Which I don't see why it shouldn't work. And there we go. And there we go. So you can see that is it's basically creating it created its own shapes and its own materials. And you can see that each one of them has a different color. So this is really cool. And yep, so it looks like our qua generator is working just fine. And we can definitely extend this if we wanted to randomly generate maybe you know hundreds of them and, and put different colors and create different looks. So that's where, where procedural generation is really powerful because we can now control them by using different variables. So I think I'm going to wrap it up in here, guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers. If you're starting out or if you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. Also, find me in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I'm also posting early access to source code and videos in advance. So make sure you check me out and thank you very much guys.